I'm sure you've probably heard of fasting, commonly used in recent years for weight loss, but a new trend called dry fasting is really raising some concerns in the health community. So here to walk us through what's going on with this is research psychologist and author, Dr. Andrea Nazarenko. Good morning to you. Welcome to Houston's Morning Show. For those of our viewers who aren't really that familiar with fasting, can you walk us through what it is and why somebody might be interested to do it in the first place? Sure, fasting has really uh, taken the, the health community by storm recently. And there's so much variability in how we fast, meaning how much time we restrict foods uh, and what we're restricting and the pattern and duration through which we do it. So, so are we intermittent fasting, which is a, a hot new trend where we, we cycle between periods of restricting calories and not eating to times where we do eat. Uh, dry fasting is a new trend that's come up based on some spiritual practices where folks not only restrict food, but also restrict water and beverages. And so fasting uh, in general has some health benefits, uh, most most well known for the benefits on weight loss and some anti-aging or supporting the aging process. However, the stretch to dry fasting is something new and uh, not as well researched and known uh, uh, as uh, typical fasting where we're restricting food. And I'm, I'm here to really express some concerns uh, about the safety and effectiveness of this technique for weight loss. Yeah, it makes me feel dehydrated and just want to grab a glass of water just thinking about you saying that <laughs> they're they're going to restrict that. But 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 I want to I want to put both sides out there. So what do advocates claim? Why would why are they saying you should try it? Yeah, so advocates and big proponents of dry fasting in particular are claiming the weight loss benefits and they look at some studies from uh, the Ramadan season. So it's very common in multiple spiritual practices to restrict food and water for a, a short period of time. And there are some studies that show that during Ramadan people lose weight. Uh, there's also some studies that show that there's reduced inflammation and by reducing inflammation, uh, folks can improve immune health. Uh, and there's also some theories related to cell rejuvenation, cell turnover, and really improving health at a cellular level. The problem with this is that these are all based in studies using fasting or dry fasting during a very particular spiritual event. It's time limited. The folks who do it are typically healthy adults and they're not doing it for the purposes of losing weight. They're not doing it to sustain weight loss. Instead, they're doing it to deepen their spiritual uh, their, their spiritual practice to increase gratitude, to increase attention and give opportunity and time for prayer. And when we think about health, we think about mind, body and soul. And so in that, by deepening their spiritual practice, they're improving their health, but they're not focused only on weight loss. When we begin to transition into weight loss, we begin to see differences in the patterns. For example, continuous dry fasting. How long are you doing this? Are you doing it recurrently? Was your state of health in a, uh, a good place before you started? And so we begin to make the waters, so to speak, a little bit muddy because we're no longer doing it in this very particular spiritual way. We're doing it to lose weight. And, and in reality, there's healthier, uh, more effective or more known to be effective ways to lose weight out there that that actually include eating healthy foods and All drinking right. water. Well, I think education is key on anything like this. Like you said, there's a big difference in doing it for religious purposes versus doing it to try to lose weight. Thank you for walking us through that so that our viewers better understand it.